Hello guys and welcome to the NW Sportscast. Today we got me and Levi. It's a rare occasion for this. And uh, we are um, doing a little bit of a, a show, not a post-game show for the Mariners. We're going to talk about their playoff odds, maybe what we think about some um, maybe key roster moves, you know. And uh, yeah, just, just getting to about the Mariners season. Obviously, big five-game winning streak, Levi. Yeah, it's been really fun. I didn't think we had it in us. Uh, we were, you know, 500. There was that graphic that was like 30 and 30, 40 and 40, 60 and 60. And now all of a sudden, here we are. What are we, eight or nine above now? Yeah, I think we're eight. Eight yeah. above. Wow, it's, it's crazy. It's cool to watch. Yeah. No, but yeah. The Padres coming up. They're below 500 easily. Mm -hmm. You know, we can we can beat those guys. They're hopefully. in turmoil. Wow. Uh, yeah, so we, we play the Padres. Um, let's try it. Is it a two game series only? Two game series, yeah. yeah. So, Let's try to win at least one. Um, yeah. Hopefully, we get both. I, I say if we win one, that, that's obviously Puts fine. But spot. it's just a good spot. But we're we're hoping for two because we still are catching teams. Yeah. Um, we still got the Blue Jays ahead of us. Is that the only team? If we want, if we're talking playoff picture, yeah, yeah we just got to get ahead of Toronto. It would feel so good. We got we got the best of Toronto last year in the playoffs. True. If we can get if we can beat them out to the playoffs this year, oh my gosh. Yes, and uh, the most want annoying to, fans in the world. If we want to try to win the West, um, we're gonna need to knock off the Astros and the Rangers. Um, the Astros have been playing some better ball of late. Yeah, Rangers kind of um, struggling a little bit, but they still are in first place, right? They yeah by by two or three games. Yeah, they still have a few games, but um, they both bring in the ace pitcher, yeah. which we did not, but we already have two ace pitchers. So yeah, all right, Levi. So if I was to ask you today. About, about the Mariners season, you know, we still are a few games back from the yeah, wild card, uh, still a few games back from, um, um, you know, from the division, um, but we're super hot right now, the bats, they're going, uh, do you think that we, by the end of September, will be in the playoffs? Well, you know, it's really hard to say, because we're doing really well right now, but we're also a streaky team, True. and when you look at the Mariners' schedule, there's a 10-game stretch at the very end, the last 10 games. And these 10 games are going to make or break our season. Three against the Rangers, three against the Astros, and then four against the Rangers to end it. So there are our last 10 games, we have seven against Texas and three against Houston. So our goal, of ground. Our goal needs up. to be, going into those 10 games, we need to put ourselves in a position where if we do good in those 10 games, we can win the division. And if we do bad in those 10 games, we want to have enough cushion that the Rangers can't bury us because the, there's a chance we go into Texas and win five of those seven games, and then we win the division. But if we lose five of those seven, we don't want that to be what lets the Blue Jays in over us. So we need we have some games against the White Sox and like the the uh, Kansas City Royals. We have some easy we go, teams. We like set we like six or seven against the Royals. The we A's is, we have a couple against the A's as well. So yeah. we have some easier teams. We need to Capitalize. lay down the hammer on these teams and say, look. This is the Seattle Mariners. We're a winning franchise. We're not going to do what we did to the Tigers and lose two of three. We're not doing that anymore. If we can just beat up on these bad teams for a while here and go into those Rangers series, then maybe I think we can make the playoffs. And I do think, I think the way things are looking right now, the rotation's cooking, the bullpen's cooking. We're going to get Jared Kelnick back as well, and then we can maybe get rid of Mike Ford. We'll see if he is still slumping. But I think we can make the playoffs. Yeah, that brings me to the next question. We got Mike Ford um, and we got Jose Caballero. Those two players, both kind of on the hot yeah. seat as of late. Um, both not swinging the bats as well. well After I having throw, some hot you know, starts. I would throw Josh Rojas into that mix as well. True, but he did just get, I don't know. Yeah, he, well, true. he has no hits as a Mariner, I don't yeah, think. Uh, yeah, So, but I, I think you got him at least a, a little bit longer just to yeah, acclimate. I, yeah, but, a little bit. But, you know... Um, the first cup, the first about month of both Ford and Caballero really is um, boosting their uh, amazing. Yeah. yeah, really boosting their numbers right now. They've yeah. been really, really bad of late. When everyone else in the Mariners is really going pretty high, and then you have guys in Tacoma. You got Sam Haggerty who can do a lot of the same for Jose Caballero. Yeah. He's been hitting like three fifty in the last thirty days. You know, really th playing some good ball down there yeah. in Tacoma. You got guys like Zach Deloach who can uh, he, he he can play um, in the outfield, and you know he can also be DH instead of. Um, Mike Ford, um, a little more athletic on the base pass, um, probably not as much um, power, yeah. but probably will get on base a little bit more. So you have some some things to weigh if you're if if you're um, the Mariners right now and what decision you want to make. So if you could make a decision, do you think yeah we you stick with Jose Caballero and Mike Ford 
and I guess you want to put Josh into that row. I would, I would throw mix. Josh in. So. Um, what do you think? What do you think is moves? Because yes, we're past the trade deadline, but there are still some guys in Tacoma which could yeah. take some spots. We got that new guy that we just traded for from Arizona. Yeah, I don't um, think he's ready yet. Yeah, but, but there's some rumors that he could come in the, in September, I, September I call up. So I do it. we'll see. So Levi, what do you think? So I look at this honestly as if there's four guys on the Mariners who are worse than the rest, right? You've got Mike Ford, mm. who is a career bench guy. He hit a bunch of home runs in June, and now he's pretty much a, only strikes out. And then you got Caballeros and Josh Rojas, who are both pretty much in major slumps right now. Mm -hmm. But they are both, you know, pretty significantly ahead of where Colton Wong was. So I, I, I see why we, we have them instead of Wong. And and Rojas and the has fourth had some guy, track record. Of... The fourth guy in there, and Ro yeah, Rojas was good last yeah. year. And the fourth guy though, it, it gave me I know we just brought him in too, but Canzone, I'm not sure if he's ready for the big leagues yet. He does he's have playing every day right now. He does have a couple doubles, but you know, he has the worst OPS on the team. So you have to, you know, you have to take that with a grain of salt because he's only played, I think, like 15 games in the big leagues. So mm -hmm. between those four guys, I do think that one of them should probably go down and re be replaced by Sam Haggerty. It really doesn't matter which of the four to me, but you do look at positionally um, and think to yourself, right, we have like France, Canzone, and and uh, Mike Ford can all play first base, so maybe so can one Dylan of more. so can Dylan Moore. Although we also have you know Demo can also play second, so you know which is also a caveat. So there's well, either one of the first basemen or second basemen is going to have to. And go Haggerty down, can think. also play. Haggerty can play everywhere around so the diamond. So I would the positional thing really isn't. And Haggerty was such factor. a spark last year. Yeah, I feel like when I, he's I could, on, yeah. and then when Jared Kellnick comes back in September. You know, you'd hopefully you wouldn't have to send another guy down because you get two more roster spots in September. So you True. can have you can have Kelnick and everyone else on the team, and then even have room to call up another. Yeah, JK is definitely well. gonna JK is definitely gonna come back right at some point. I Supposedly, think I mean, I think he's he's on point. track. Yeah. He's on track. So we have to hold up, yeah. cross our fingers on that one. I, I just think that like if you're the Mariners, you got um, uh, Mike Ford. Like less than a month ago, was hitting in a four hole for a little bit there. You know, like yeah. You know, I I feel like it's like, you know, he could get hot, and I feel like you kind of, yeah. um, you know, if he gets hot, you definitely want to have him on your team. But you know, kind of just waiting for lightning to strike isn't always the best option. I, I um, wonder if Ken Zone though is the one. I mean, especially when you consider just extreme experience level. Yeah, he has the least experience, and I know I know it's good to get the I young guys. I think you got it. I think you put down Josh and you Rojas put down Josh. instead of Ken Josh, and, and Rojas all. I mean, Rojas has, has had a track record of success, but this year just hasn't. Yeah, been. Um, and then another guy I want to talk about is. Um, you know who could be into this category if uh, he has a couple of cold weeks, which could definitely happen. Is Cade Marlowe, who's obviously yeah, who's who's been super super hot. But you've seen Mike Ford, who had above a thousand OPS for like a month and a half there. Like, yeah. he was doing really good. And then you have you know Jose Caballero, also who got who was hot to start. Um, is Cade Mar Cade Marlowe super super good? I'm not taking anything away from him. He's he's been very good for this ball club. He's probably he single handedly got us one win. Probably contributed to a couple yeah. others, right? But you can't, you can't think he's uh you know, he he's gonna slump at some point. Yeah. And it's just it's just bound to happen. I watched enough Kate Marlowe in AAA. I just this guy is not, this guy is not. He's a twentieth round pick. Yeah, that tells I'm you saying, what you need to know. This is this guy is not our next left fielder for the future. Um, and there are people on Twitter who would tell or on X that would tell you that there are yeah. people who are saying right now. The future outfield is going to be Marlo, Kellnick, and Julio, and that's very unrealistic yeah. perspective. I, and Marlo's a good player, and when he's hot, we should definitely have him in the lineup. And when he slumps, uh, yeah. you know, he, he can run the base path pretty well, and he can play when guys need to, um, you know, need to rest or whatever. But I, I think he's going to be a career a career backup slash spark plug, you know, maybe he gets hot for a little bit there type of guy. For right now, you got to ride him, but let's say he gets cold in a couple of weeks, and then... You know he doesn't get a hit for a week, and then we're we're approaching early September, and oh, in the last you know the last twenty games, um, he's he he's hitting one fifty with a you know a four hundred OPS. It's like, it's like yeah. you know, and and then you start to think, you know, he could be into that category. Right now, obviously, he's not. So yeah, I I but I do think Sam Haggerty has uh, proven in the past he's a really, he's a really big yeah. spark plug guy. He he makes plays on the baseball field, and then I also think that um. Uh, I, I think a guy like Zach Deloach, who's been kind of, he's been plugging away in AAA for a while now, 
I think he has a chance also to come in for for a guy like Mike Ford. Um, but we'll see. If Mike starts to hit, obviously yeah. that all changes. So, yeah, I will say I think one of the things I, I have critiques for Scott Service, but one of the things I think he does really well, especially the last two three years has been he knows what, how to ride the hot hand. Yeah, And true. he seems to have a pretty good idea of when to get off the hot hand. Like, yeah. he when a young guy, like a guy like a Marlowe, is doing good, or like Haggerty last year, he, he gets playing yeah. time, and then when he stops doing good, Scott pulls him back and says, look, it's time to give some other guy. You know what I mean? So He's very much a um, performance-based yeah. manager, which yeah, I, I respect. which is good. Which I, I think I, that's I think. good. Julio's not hitting, you know, moving on the lineup, you know. A, exactly. lot, a lot of managers want to have the guts to put no. their superstar 10-year contract yeah. guy down in the order, um, you know. But A, a lot of managers yeah. wouldn't be playing Cade Marlowe and Dominic Kane zone on yeah. a pretty much regular True. basis. Like Mike Ford, when he was hitting, he was in the four-hole. He four was hole, in the, like, the four-hole, I know. So I, I, do, I do think that's – and I think baseball is a really streaky sport where yeah. – when you're getting hits, you're getting hits. It doesn't really matter if you're Dylan Moore or Julio Rodriguez. Who Dylan Moore, a guy who I said for a month shouldn't be on the team, and now all of a sudden he's one yeah. of the hottest hitters. And so there you go. It just happens. And it's just, it's very, um, you know, it's just very predictable. Like, when our bats are starting to hit, we're starting to win. So, yeah. I mean, there you go. Um, didn't make any moves to the deadline, and somehow... Well, we made the one. Yeah, but it's not really helping us. Um, not yet. I'm saying, I'm saying bat wise. Although I will say, Kinzone has had a couple decent at bats. See, that's the thing is when Rojas he's gets struggling, in there. but he he has Kinzone has shown bits of ability that I think yeah. could be good. I was at like the one game last week um, that the Rojas Mariners seemingly lost. Like, of course, I was there, but I saw a Red Sox game where they had multiple chances, and Rojas um, came up guy second on third, yeah, needed a run, good. and. He just it it did not look like he had a chance. I, I'm serious. It didn't look like he had a chance to get a hit yeah. in that spot. He was waving. He was he was checking his swing. He was you know watching balls down the middle of the plate. He was swinging at balls off the plate in the in in the dirt. It just he didn't look good up there. He went over four that night. I, it was their first game. Granted, it was Kenzone's and Rojas's first game that I watched. But yeah. Kenzone went in there. Um, and I believe he doubled, or he he got. I think he got a hit. And he looked a lot better in that. So just from a from just from that, I think uh, I think yeah. Ken Zone is a more valuable member to the team. He also had Rojas. a very clutch hit in the ninth inning of that game that yeah. Marlowe then hit the grand slam. Yeah, no, true. So I've seen I've seen some things I like. I haven't yeah. seen a lot of things. And Rojas also made a couple of errors already, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know. I, I, don't I don't know think, about him. I think his defense isn't like a huge factor. Like he's okay, I think. But I know why we traded for him because yeah. Jerry Depoto, the number one thing, what does he love? Control. True. He wants control, and Rojas has two years of control, True. which means he could. maybe maybe Rojas but is the he's, future. At second he's base. you know he's what is he twenty eight? Yeah, twenty nine. So something like that. theoretically, he should be in his prime. And yeah. So there's so, not much know. room to grow. Yeah. Compared to Kenzone, where he's what twenty four. Yeah, Kenzone. So Kenzone could be a good ball player. Speaking of good defense, J T Crawford. JP With a Crawford, couple of oh great my. plays, um, um, one that I think ended he's our the best game, player. one that ended the game, um, another a, a huge double play ball, and was it last night's game? It it might have been. Yeah. Um, but JP Crawford, the the advanced metrics show that he's a very below average shortstop. Is that really? Uh, what yeah, it says it does. He won a Gold Glove. I, I know, and but That's this year, yeah, and then but um, JP Crawford I could get it up for you guys, the but the Mariners in wins above replacement. But yeah, no, super super valuable piece, um, and just seemingly makes the big plays when they need to be made, and um, you know gets hits, gives Julio Rodriguez chances to bring him in, yeah. and, and Julio has been better as of late. Um, you know, doubled off the wall, literally off the wall, the top of the wall there um, was a part of uh, all three of the runs that we scored. Um, you know, obviously bringing in two RBIs and then also um, getting a single, which Ty France eventually knocked him in on. So. Julio has been starting to do a little bit better. Um, you know, Cal Raleigh and Tom Murphy are both doing well. You know, um, you know, Cade Marlowe is obviously doing well. Suarez has got what? Like, he had like eight straight games with an ten. RBI. He broke He's the Mariners ten. team record. Yeah. And so, then he went one day without it, and then right away back yesterday he goes, so he's hit 11 of 12. Yeah, so, I mean, so it, it's very it's very easy to start seeing why we're winning games. Yeah. Like, all these players are, are when hitting. When guys start to hit, hit yeah. it, that's when it happens. And then, and then, 
Bryce Miller with a good outing, you know. Um, Brian Wu had a good one. Bryce Miller had something like, like it was crazy. Like after, Ten strikeouts in yeah, five innings. It was really, really good. Um, his first inning, like, 60% of balls, or he was, like, like it was, like, hard <laughs> hit balls. first inning was yeah. bad. But then he really started to get it together, so. Yeah. I'll ask it to see, but, um, yeah. So Kirby, Kirby finally had a good outing. First time since All-Star Game that mm -hmm. he's pitched well. Yeah, and I think I, I, I told you guys this earlier in my last post-game show. I don't know if you watched that, Levi, but um, I pronounced the Angels officially dead. So I think they are. I, I, oh, think, my, yeah, I, think, I think they're they dunzy. So. And not only for this year. Shoy Otani. Oh, if, oh, I mean, without Otani, they... Traded they, their farm system and... This, they've this got a bunch of guys. They've got a bunch of young guys who haven't done a lot. And Mike Trout, who gets injured every year. I mean, they... They're going to be bad next year. Yeah. And for a couple of years, I think. they got to rebuild that farm system. All right, Levi. So do you, just give me your, your path for the Mariners. What do you think is going to happen? Look, my path for the Mariners is keep the bats rolling, keep the bullpen rolling, um, and I think we can, can continue to lace up some victories. I think that it's going to come down to those last. I think that four-game series against Texas might decide the season. At and the I very think, end, yeah. I think – we might come a few games short of the Rangers, uh, but I think we're gonna get a wild card spot. And uh, if we get, you know, if we end up in the number six wild card, I know people say, "Oh, it's the sixth wild card," and how good could it be? But you end up getting to play the number three seed, which would be the yeah, Minnesota the Twins, Twins who, who have been terrible. Yeah, we they're barely the above five hundred. So if you get to play the Twins from the sixth wild card, I mean, honestly, the Mariners, once you once you get ahead of the Blue Jays. Just don't even try to pass up Houston. I'd rather have Houston play Tampa, and we can beat, beat let those two guys beat up on each other. We can beat the Twins easier than it would be to beat Houston good again. Point. That's a good point. Yeah. Do I want to face Houston in a wild card series again? No, thank you. Yeah, probably. Right. Not. I mean, I don't get away from Houston. Get away from them. Like Berlander. Too. And then you beat the Twins, and then all of a sudden, you know, you might ha you either play in the Rangers or Baltimore. The Rangers, we know them. The Baltimore Orioles are a young team. I think we could beat either of those teams. So yeah. I, I see the legitimate shot for the Mariners. to. I don't think we will make the World Series, but I see a chance that we could go all the way to the championship game. Yeah. I, I definitely see a possibility in that, but I, I would have to disagree just just based on the fact that I, I see that I think our team is worse this year than last year. I disagree. And I think our team is worse last year. I think we have a worse bullpen. We don't. I don't. Um, I, we didn't have Topa I think we're last better. year I think or Saucedo. I, well, we had Paul Sewell last year at this wow. time. Um, I think <laughs> we I didn't think have Isaiah Campbell. True. <laughs> yeah, he's a dog. <laughs> um, I think that our our bats were similar to last year. I mean, really, there's yeah. not much change there. Um, Kane Marlowe, though. Yeah, for now. <laughs> for now. And then uh, I think that just a very similar team honestly to last yeah. year. So I think they're gonna make the AL the ALDS. And I think that's like that's what I thought two weeks ago. This is yeah. a lot higher than what I thought they. Well, I would not the think they're in the playoffs really. The odds went from I think seven percent to twenty seven. So we still have a yeah. ways to go. No, hundred percent. But, but we're we're climbing the la the ladder. Yeah, and I think there's still a legitimate shot at um, winning the division. A hundred percent. Yeah, I mean if the Rangers. We just gotta hit. keep. We gotta honestly just keep up with them. Maybe pick up a couple games and then go into those last ten games like Levi said. If we win like eight to ten of those. If you're three back and then you finish the season eight and two, against the with, teams with that you need to beat. Five of those be, wins yeah. against Texas. I mean, there you go. Yeah, true. So yeah, certainly possible. Certainly possible. All right. Anything? Any closing words? Um, not really. No. All right. Um. Yeah, we got a big series against the yeah. Padres. Got to win. Got to win I'll at least one. Tomorrow. Cannot drop two games. Yeah. Cannot that drop would, two that games. That would be a momentum killer. Yes. At home. Honestly, tomorrow's a big game. We got to start this home uh, series off right. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Padres, still a pretty talented team. Um, obviously not playing up the snuff right now, but uh, they definitely um, they got talent there, and at any given night, they could score yeah. eight, nine runs on us. So well, who's tomorrow on the bump? Uh, honestly, I don't know. So we had a who just Miller was just up Miller and then I know Brian Wu pitched against the Angels as well. And so did Castillo. And Castillo. So I think it's either Gilbert or it's Kirby, one of those two. I have a feeling it's, it's Gilbert. Gilbert, I think, Logan. yeah, I think it's Gilbert. So, so hopefully Logan can go out there and beat whoever the Padres have to offer. Yeah, it's crazy. I heard an interesting thing on the radio the other day. Gilbert throwing like 
he was like the most fastball pitch or most throwing fastball really? pitcher last year, and then this year he's throwing like something like twenty ten percent. It's like pretty low. Silver's okay. really changed his philosophy. Yeah, speaking with of that, guys who so. should do that, Andres Munoz, keep throwing the slider. That guy just needs to lean into the slider. Yeah, no, I mean he throws the fa- and he throws a great fastball. His fastball is very little movement. When he throws yeah. his fastball too many times, the guys hit him so hard. Yeah, I just watch days like. Hundred miles, hundred miles an hour off the bat. Munoz and, and almost just... gave up that last game there. <laughs> well, hey, you know that what? Was scary. He clutched up. He got that there was the last second. Scary. Second. Oof. Yeah. My guy was this close away from giving that up, but it was a ground rule double, so yeah, I was lucky. Yeah. All right. And then that's... he walked the next guy too. Yeah. But he got the last strikeout, so. And he got lucky on a Shohei Otani strikeout. Yeah. Because the, the ball was like. Six inches off the plate and oh, still called it a strikeout. Yeah, he out, benefited so. from the umpire there. And it, yeah, so that honestly, that could have been. And hey, we need a, we weren't getting breaks early you in the season, what? and yeah. we're starting to get some breaks. So get some there lucky you go. Breaks. People start hitting. We start to get some breaks, and our pitchers are giving us a chance to win every game, yeah. pretty much. That's a recipe for success right there. So let's keep it up. Um, go Mariners! And yeah, I think we're all out. NW Sportscast. See you guys.